Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you, we praise you, and we give you honor. We thank you, O oh God, for this night which you have preordained. And we speak even right now, O oh God, that you are in this place. Father, I know, I am sure, and I am certain. I'm not smart enough, I'm not eloquent enough, I'm not articulate enough to speak to these people. I don't know what to say. And so now, oh God, I step back and I ask from this point forward that I say not another word, but that you will speak through me to these people. Father, speak a rhema prophetic word that when we hear this word, we will never be the same. I speak that even right now, that as you speak, somebody will be healed in their bodies before the altar call. That as you speak, demons will be chased out of this place. That as you speak, someone will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Someone will be refilled with the Holy Ghost. But most of all, we will be encouraged to continue to walk in your grace and your power. Satan, the Lord rebuke you even right now. We rebuke every demonic spirit that comes to hinder the word of God. We rebuke every distracting spirit, every hindering spirit, every competitive spirit. You're rebuked in the name of Jesus and cast out of this place. In the name of Jesus, get out. And it is so. We did not come to see flesh. We did not come to see an individual. But the glory of God shall fall in this place. And it is so in the name of Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, call on Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah. I expect God to do supernatural on tonight. I did not come to the convocation to impress you, but I came to hear from God. And I wonder if there's enough faith in this room to pull on God to say, God, show yourself right now in this place. If it's here, I just need you to begin, not some stirred up something, but from the bottom of your heart, to, to, to beg God to move in this place, to ask God to manifest his miracles in this place. Right now, right now, don't look to me. Father, manifest your miracles in this place. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God show that you are God right now. I rebuke the demonic spirit of unbelief. Lord, we believe, but help us to believe. And it is so. Amen. If you believe that prayer and agree with that prayer, shout out, man. Well, we thank God for you being here on tonight for this missions night, world missions night. We tried to give you a glimpse of what's happening in the world in the church of God in Christ. There is so much that's, that's happening in our church around the world that time will not give us the permission to tell you. But listen, I want to keep in touch with you. These videos, I want to send them email to you. I want to send some other information to you. So if you will get out your phone for a moment quickly, and if you text Kojic Missions, all caps, all one word, I'm going to make sure we send these videos to you, these links, and other things that's happening. You will text Kojic Missions to 22828. Nobody else said it, but I'm going to tell you now. It's, it's not a secret. 22828, you will text Kojic Missions, all one word, all caps. If you text that, it's gonna add for your email address and I'm gonna send you something this week, even before you leave the convocation, but next week to make sure you have and know what's going on in the world of missions. That's Kojic Missions to 22828. It'll be on the screen later, but you'll see it. I thank God for our presiding bishop who has a vision for the world. Our presiding bishop has a genuine uh, vision for the world and I honor him because it is he that said, literally, let's take the world. The Church of God in Christ is now in 87 countries. That's a wonderful thing, but there's 192 in the world. We're not satisfied until we're in 192 countries. 
And that's what we're going for. So I don't even clap for the 87 because I'm saying we're going 192 in Jesus' name. I want to thank God for Bishop Moody who introduced me, my father and our father at missions and such a great, magnanimous and wonderful man. But not only Bishop Moody, but Mama Moody. Thank you, Mama Moody, for being a mama. Thank you, Bishop, for being a father. I thank God for my wife, my wife, Kosekaziwami. I want you to meet my wife. You met her earlier, but I want you to see her just stand, sugar. That's my wife, my best friend, my ministry partner. I appreciate her. And all of the people from around the world, she's the mother of our 11 children, and I'm grateful for her. All of the people from around the world that are here that you see arrayed, I can't mention everyone's names, but such great people. I would love for our uh, vice presidents to stand, Bishop Michael Cole, who I hear here, uh, Elder Mark Success, Supervisor Sadiri King, Elder Carl Patton, Dr. Faye Marine Butler, and Elder uh, Plummer in his absence. Listen, time is going, so I wanna get to the word. I have a word that's not from me, and it's a word that I don't wanna preach. It's a difficult word, it's a prophetic word, but I must share it. As I look at Bishop Shear, the chairman of the Board of Bishops, I don't acknowledge him, I'm a mirror of him because I grew up looking at him all my life as a child up until now. I actually literally lived down the street from him and I honor you, sir, and thank God for you. It's a word that God gave me and the, word that, the one word that God gave me as a theme is infiltration. Infiltration. It's okay for a boat to be in the water, but when water get in the boat, you're in trouble. It's okay for the church to be in the world, but when the world gets into the church, we're taking loss. We've been infiltrated. I can't go through this entire text. God told me to go through the book of Ezekiel, and I understood, and as I read through the book of Ezekiel, God began to speak to me prophetically. I can't go, I can't exegete the entire uh, text, but even in Ezekiel chapter 8, there's so much in there, but it spoke to me prophetically. One thing I had to ask God to forgive me of the sin of being the man who prayed and said, I thank God I'm not like these other sinners. I thank God I'm not like these folks who eat and never fast. I thank God that I pray better than them, that so often I became one of those saints that made a sport of making fun of or looking down on other saints and say what they're not doing. And God showed me how ugly I am. It's so easy for me, I don't know about you, but it was so easy for me to see what the saints ain't doing, what the church is not doing. But then God reminded me that I am the church. If the church is not doing it, and if I see it, it means that God has called me to do it. And if there's a deficit that I see, then I am called to fulfill that deficit. In other words, when I see the church is not doing something, then it means God has showed it to me because I'm a part of the solution. I found myself saying, Lord, forgive me for being there and just thank you for making me worthy to be a part of your call. If we look at Ezekiel 8, I'll just go through it just for a moment because it talks as a text that begins in chapter 1 that Ezekiel says that the hand of the Lord was upon him. He was sitting with many of the elders of Israel and the Lord appeared as fire and the color of red above him. And it says the Lord stretched out his hand and he grabbed him by his hair and he yanked him and he showed him something. In other words, God wanted his attention. And I believe now, people of God, that God is not asking anymore for our attention. He's not begging anymore. He's demanding our attention. He's demanding the attention of the people of God. God has called us to literally impact the world. God has called us to change the news headlines. But if we, he does not have our attention, we're in trouble. Ezekiel then said, God brought me in visions of God to Jerusalem, to the north gate of the inner courts. He took him to the temple. Not only did he take him to the temple, he didn't take him to the outer court, but he brought him to the inner courts. And when he took him there, he showed him there were many things there, but there are three infiltrations that I see here in this text. And this is not a message of, of condemnation, but it's a message of warning for us as a church. Because all of our institutions have been co-opted in our communities. But if we, we are the last line of defense for our children and for our generations, if we fall in, it's over. The infiltration that's seen there 
He says in, verse cha in, in chapter 8 of Ezekiel, verse 5, he said, Then he said to me, the Lord, Son of man, lift up your eyes now towards the north. So I lifted up my eyes toward the north, and there the north gate, the north of the altar gate, was the image of jealousy in the entrance. He went to the north gate of the inner court, and there was the image of jealousy. So the first infiltration, the first thing to get in that should not have been in was where? At the north gate of the inner court, and it's the image of jealousy. And then he says, not only is there jealousy there, furthermore, he said to me, son of man, do you see what they are doing at the gates of the temple? The great abominations that the house of Israel commits here to make me go far away from my sanctuary. In other words, God told him, the things that they are doing is chasing me out of the church. God is saying right now that there are things that we are doing that we're here, but he's leaving. He's not in the church because we've chased him out of the church with the image of jealousy before the church. James chapter 3 verse 14 says, but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts. Do not boast and lie against the truth. The wisdom, this wisdom, does not come from above, but it is earthly, sensual, it is demonic. Not only is it an infiltration, but it is an infestation of demons. Demons have infested and infiltrated many of our churches unawares because when you have people jealous and self-seeking, pushing and making themselves in front of others, it is demonic. The woman twerking on the video is demonic, but it's worse to have somebody who has their own agenda in the church and even Jesus can't get a word in on the program. And God is saying, wake up, church, because you have been infiltrated. You worry more about what people think about you than what I think. We worry more about how it looks than if it's in the Bible. And if we continue there, God is saying, I'm out of here. You can have it on your own. The demonic, many people do not see the demonic and do not understand the demonic. The, the flagship of spiritual warfare is the church of God in Christ. I remember coming, coming to church and messing around and trying to act safe and people coming saying, I see, I see, I see. They had a sense of discernment. They had a prophetic walk. They weren't prophesying for money. They were prophesying to tell them. They weren't prophesying for a seed. They were prophesying whether you gave them an offering or not. God is saying, if you don't get it right, I'm out of here. You can have it on your own. The wisdom that is from above is pure, then peaceable, gentle willing to yield. That means even when I'm offended, I can bag up and just, even when I'm not, even when I'm right, I'll just let you go. It's okay, I'll let you yield. And so that is the first infiltration. I don't have time to elaborate on that. The second infiltration is a breach. We see this breach in verse 8. When we come down to verse 8 in chapter 8 of Ezekiel, and it says, then he said to me, I'm pushing because I, I can't, I never can preach without praying for folks. I never can preach without praying for people, and I got a time limit. I want to pray for you because God is about to do something in here. He said, he said to me, son of man, dig into the wall. When I dug, first of all, he showed them that there was a hole in the wall of the temple, of the inner court. I hope you hear what I'm saying. There was a hole in the wall. Now, the wall is to keep things out, but if there's a hole in the wall, then things which are meant to be out, that, that, that should not be coming out, are coming in. There's a hole in the wall, and not only was there a hole in the wall, but in verse 8, he says, Son of man, look in the hole. And when he dug into the hole in the wall, there was a door inside the hole. In other words, a breach had now been formalized, a clandestine interest had now been made a place where people were coming and going when they should not have been coming and going in this place. 
And then he said, not only is there a door, in verse 9 he says, go in and see the wicked abominations which they are doing in there. And Ezekiel says, so I went in and I saw there every sort of creeping thing, abominable beasts and the idols of the house of Israel portrayed on the walls. Not only were they worshiping other gods, they were proud of them. They hung them up on the walls. Well, what does this mean? And I asked God, what does this mean? And God sent me to 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 verses 5. Because in Ezekiel he says, these talk to the elders because they have idols in their hearts. And I said, what are the idols that we have? And God said, I'll show you the idols in the last days. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, excuse me, yeah, chapter 3, verse 2, you taught me this in Sunshine Band, Bishop. It says, for men in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves. There's some people you can't meet unless they give you their whole resume. In the first two minutes, I'm this, I'm that, I got my degree here, I did that, I did that. They love themselves so much, they will never listen to you. They're lovers of themselves. They're lovers of money. When you, when you preach about how much money you got, when you think that your anointing is linked to your bank account, something is wrong with you. That's demonic. God don't care about the car you drive, and I don't care if it's from Europe or Detroit. It don't matter. Your anointing is not linked to that car because there's a whole lot of wicked people that drive the same kind of car. So what's your shoes came from wherever? They're not worth what you paid for anyway. And so we begin to think that, we begin to replace because when what we love, we begin to step into. So when you love money, you begin to cover yourself in things. That becomes the idols that you worship. So then you will be pimped because you will do anything for money. You will compromise. You will cut corners. You will dance when they say dance and you will stop when they say stop. You will preach what they want to hear. You will sing how they want you to sing. You will act like they tell you to act because they're paying you. But when you don't love money and you say, my God shall supply all. Whether I have money or not, I got a God that has all the money. I'm a bishop. Ain't nothing wrong with having money, but I'm a broke bishop. I come from a long line of broke bishops. There was two broke bishops going to church and a man was sitting there asking for money. And they said, man, we broke. Silver and gold have we none. But such as we have, we'll give you that. I don't have a 401k. I ain't got money everywhere, but I give you what I got. And in the name of Jesus, get up. See, when you have money, you a big man in the mall, but you nothing outside of that mall. But when you have an anointing, your anointing flies everywhere. And the anointing is priceless. I don't worship no money. I don't have no money in my pocket, but I have everything I need plus bonus. So the infiltration was they were worshiping idols. He said they would become, they would love money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, they eat all night long, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form. Hey, hey, they know how to do that, but they have no power. They know how to dance, but they have no power. A form of godliness. They say hallelujah, but they don't really mean it. A form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. In case you don't understand who that is who has infiltrated us with the idols, that's liars, wine drinkers, cigar smokers, hookah smokers, eternal security preachers, liberation theology preachers, 
preachers that don't believe Jesus is the only way. Adulterers, fornicators, serial divorcers, wife beaters, husband abusers, gay folks, lesbians, down lows, merciless people, self-promoters, selfish folks, baby killers, child abusers, pimp daddies, cougars. All of them have infiltrated the house. There's been an infiltration. And I'm warning you now, we gotta get it out. I gotta move, I gotta move, cause God's gonna deliver somebody in this place. I'm not fighting you, I'm fighting the demons that bind you. I ain't mad at you, I'm mad at the demons that's holding you back from what God got in your life. Number three, infiltration is double agents. Because God said, now, leave the gate of the inner court and go inside the inner court. And he said there were 25 men with their backs to the temple, facing the east, worshiping the sun. These were masons. Because you can't be saved and be a mason. And we got masons up in our church, bowing to demons and coming in our pulpits. These are Eastern stars. You can't be no Eastern star and be saved. How you gonna preach to me and you bowing at the altar? You ain't hiring a biff and raise you. I was raised by the blood of Jesus. They were facing the east, worshiping the sun, infiltrating the holy place. In the inner court was the table of showbread, was the table of incense, was the candles that did not go out with the illumination of the word. And now they had gotten in and had perverted the worship of God. Some of you are so proud of your sororities and fraternities, but you ain't proud of Jesus. You ski weed, ooh, ooh, roo, roo. But you, won't, you ain't talking about Jesus. You ain't got no Jesus bumper sticker, but you put your fraternity bumper sticker. You ashamed of Jesus, but you proud of your frat. Go mild. What in the world? How did these folks get into the house? How did it happen? Or what do we do? We got to repair the breaches. There was a dead, infiltrated church in Matthew 17. A church that didn't have altar calls, but they had long offerings. There was a church that, that didn't have a youth program, that didn't acknowledge fathers and pastors. The man brought his son to the dead church, and his son stayed the same. When Jesus came and said he couldn't be healed, but Jesus had advice for this infiltrated church. And I believe that advice is to you too. He said, you could not cast those demons out. Y'all talking too much about what used to happen and not about what's happening. I thank God for Bishop Mason, but he, he died before I was born. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When you do these things, your church will be a today church. He said, you could not cast them out because of your unbelief. He didn't say believe so that you can get this and get that. Your unbelief to believe that God is God, that he can do anything, that uh, uh, you didn't need a pill to fix it, that you can cast that demon out. And then he said, if you got the right Bible, because they deleted it out of some of the Bibles, you got NIV, they deleted it. John chapter 17, verse 21 said, this kind of power, does not come but through fasting and prayer. You can't talk, of, you can't fast and eat at the same time. I don't know where people got that from. Some, somebody infiltrated our church and played us and now we eating, calling it fasting because you didn't eat no meat. That ain't a fast. Not eating meat is not a fast. Who told you that? An infiltrator told you that and he took your power with you.
Jesus didn't fast eating oatmeal. So all I had, Facebook, family, oatmeal today. I'm so hungry, I had no steak. That ain't no fast. You fast, you don't eat tomorrow. Let's not eat tomorrow. I thought you'd say amen up there. Let's shut the restaurants down in St. Louis and let's walk through the street. The time we would have been ordering and waiting and eating, let's go witness to somebody and pray for somebody. We got to pray to repair the beaches by believing and believing come through faster. Then we got to call for air support. We got a call for air support. Ezekiel said, I sought for a man of them who could make a wall and stand in the gap. We got to stand in the gap and stop praying to God about what we need and begin to intercede and take nations. God going to get you a husband. God going to get you a wife. But what about the nations of the world? When your prayer becomes bigger than you, God pours into you something greater. And then finally, we got a call for the special forces. James 4, 7, you taught me this, Bishop, in Sunday school, basement of Bay Bailey Temple. Therefore, submit yourself to God. See, the reason why we can't fight the devil is because we're not submitted. Because we've been listening to folks, we can't submit to nobody. Submit yourself to God and resist the devil. You can't resist the devil watching scandal. You can't resist the devil watching power. You definitely can't resist the devil watching Greenleaf because the devil is talking to you and putting demons into your heart and your mind. Resist the devil and he, must, he will not just go, he will flee from you. Then it says, cleanse your hands, wash your hands. You sinners, he talking to me, wash your hands. I know you washed your hands in 1978, but then look, if you last washed your hands back in high school and you grown now, you're gonna catch a disease. You gotta wash your hands every day, two, three times a day. Quit telling me I wash my hands already. Wash your hands, you sinners. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart. God, I see, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. You double-minded. Double-minded is this. You in the church, but you hate church folks. What kind of sense do that make? You are church folks. How can you be like, I'm in church, but I don't like church folks. There's a difference between church folks and what, 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 huh? Church folks are folks who go to church. You just a double-minded, that's why your cousin, your, 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 your nephew, them, they won't come to church because you double-minded. And the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You in church, but you hate church. You tweeting about how, uh, how, how unrighteous and how, how legalistic we are. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Do you think God can do a miracle in five minutes? I dare you to meet me at this altar. Quickly, you have your seat. If God was talking to you, meet me here quickly. You got to do it quick. 